Excuse me. Excuse me. Yes? What can I do for you? Have you any idea what time I'll be through in there? Yeah, I've no idea. I could say ten, but it'd be a guess. They'll not be later, not with the pub shutting us out past. What, uh, what was it you wanted? I'm waiting for somebody. Is it all right if I wait near? You're Mildred Braithwaite's girl, aren't you? Uh, Ka Kathleen? No. No, I'm not. Aren't you? Goodness me, you're the spitting image. Any idea what time the life is to finish in there? I've told you, I don't know. Pop your head round and ask. For goodness sake, I'll just work here. OK. Have a seat. If you can find one. Well, not that one. You throw a fit. Any idea who's? You're not uh, pressed by any chance, are you? No, I'm not. I'm just waiting for somebody in there. His. He's been trouble since we got him. The wild man of Lely, they call him. Oh, I've nothing against him personally, mind. He's always very charming and considerate with me. He just doesn't seem to be able to stay out of bother. You must have read about him. And as you can hear, He's never likely to make the Guinness Book of Records for pouring oil on troubled waters, is he? Listen to it. I can remember when General Management Committee monthly meetings meant 12 old fellas, two women, a pat on the head for each of them from the MP, vote of thanks from the floor, and own benign at the latest. There was never any of this with Mr. Orton. Mr. Orton is a man you could respect, look up to. Respect wins votes in these pet. Listen to it. I thought he was pretty popular in the constituency. Oh, he is. The Tories love him. At the time we've weathered this lot, they could put up a dead horse against him and still win comfortably. Right. That's that lot. They all finished. All right. As much as I'm doing, I'll do the rest tomorrow. I have a home to go to. I'll take a few with you. Some hopes, huh? She's waiting for somebody in there. How's your mother? All right. Oh, good. See you tomorrow. Right. Good night. I should wait out there, love, if I were you. You're liable to miss it, else. It is a fella I take in, yeah? You think I was a pretty school kid or something? No, no, no. Excuse me. Sorry. I didn't mean to be in here. I'm just coming out of the rain. It's OK. Are we going or what? Yep. Yeah. I want to see one or two people. I'll be five minutes. OK. Take it easy, eh? Ah, right. oh, there you are, sir. All finished, have we? Now, just give me some idea of your whereabouts tomorrow. I'll pass it under the station. Uh, I'll be home most of the day. Which home will that be, sir? Foundry Street. I'll ring in if I'm moving about. Grand. Right, well, we'll see you back then, sir. Fine. Excuse me. I'll be a few minutes. Right, yeah, sir. Uh, well, I'll see you. You wanted a word, I think. Is Frank Hilton not coming, then? No, I had to get off. Important meeting, Trades Council. 
You mind if I sit in on this, comrades? I know it's not regional business, but I'd like to see this thing sorted out. Right. I want to know what that pantomime was all about. I was thrown to the wolves. I want to know why. I want to know why neither of you had anything to say in my defence. I want to know why copies of my speech in the Standing Committee weren't circularised to every member of the GMC as I requested. And I'm asking you to because you know the answers. So, what's it all about, eh? Now then, Bill. Hang on a bit, Albert. All right? You stepped out of line. Oh, Look, don't you want to hear this or not? You're bloody marvelled at asking questions. You're bloody hopeless at listening to the answers. One, you took a deliberate, calculated, anti-party line on terrorism. Oh, here now let me finish, for Christ's sake, will you? Two, you get involved in a punch-up in the house. Three, throughout the past week, with people dead and maimed down the road, you managed to alienate all sections of the party and most of the voters in this constituency by persisting in this futile and, to my mind, callous defence of what you said in London. Four, you sit there tonight like some little intellectual tin god asserting your right to be right when everybody in that room knew you'd blundered. I've read your speech. It stinks. So you set me up? I did Bill. nothing of the bloody... This is a democratic party. Delegates to the General Management Committee are entitled to ask the member to give an account of his actions. True, right. They are the party, Bill. You'd do well not to forget it. Anyone else? All right, let me say something. When this prorogation is over and we all troop back to the House, this bill will come back to the chamber for its third reading. I shall vote against it. I shall vote against it, comrades. Not as some little intellectual tin god, but as a socialist committed to the defence of democratic freedoms. Because, comrades, when these are threatened, it's the working class, and especially it's more militant members who feel the pinch first. But that's... As I said in my speech, which you have read, bombing, shooting, urban terror, these are bankrupt politics. Crude, ugly, indiscriminate, pointless. This I also said. But the answer, comrades, does not lie in turning the country into a paramilitary state oh, that... with laws that can trap a militant worker called O'Reilly more easily than a terrorist called O'Flynn. That... If you don't agree with that, not... you mean, that's fine. That's okay. That's your privilege. But don't you pull the bloody roof down on me because I do. Lad, nobody's questioning your integrity. It's the way you set about things. On an issue like this, I mean, my God, your local party's got a right to be consulted. Yeah, yeah. All right, if you're voting for the journal group, that's one thing. But on your own and often, that's just maverick. It's just death. True. Well, what are we supposed to do, eh? Our party's not made up of people with university educations and teaching certificates. And a vote against a bill that's trying to do something about senseless and terrible murders is a vote for the people who commit them. Yeah. I, I know, I know. That. I didn't say I know. that. That's not the point. It's what our people think you said. What the TV and the radio and the papers make you appear to be saying. That's at issue. This movement's... Our people don't believe in violence, Bill. It goes very deep with them. You've touched a nerve and you mustn't be surprised when people shout. <sighs> We better talk this thing over before he goes back down. To Albert. 
Oh, really? I've got those leaflets in the boot. You may as well take them with you. Fine. I can't do this job with one eye over my shoulder to see what the people are going to say, Albert. I know you can't, Bill. You can't do it by despising them either. You've got to stay in touch. You can't run all the time. Sometimes you've got to walk so as people can see where you're going. I know what Gorky said when he arrived in some godforsaken spot in outer Russia somewhere to lecture to the peasants on socialism. He said, is this the rubble on which we are to build a revolution? And the answer is, yes, Mr. Gorky. Yes, Mr. Brand. Because without them, there is no revolution. We're all you've got, comrade. I'll try and get one in at the club before they close. Will you join me? No, I won't, thanks. Think about it. Remember me to Mrs. Brand and the kiddies, won't you? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Albert. Good night, now. Come late. Don't let the bastards grind you down, comrade. The young socialists are with you. Cheers. Sandwich, no, no, you get off to bed then. Ah, all right. Anything you want to say to me? Good wait. Problem isn't what the general management committee thinks. It's what that lot out there are thinking. You're out in space, comrade, and it's time you came down. What makes you think you know them better than me? Because if I didn't, I'd be out of a job, friend. How long since you last visited the Labour Club? Oh, I don't know. A month, six weeks, maybe. Try it tonight. See if you get the smiles and pats and handshakes you used to. I've got to go. Oh, where'll you be? Oh. I'm going away for a few days. What's here? Nothing. What about the family? They're in Scotland. It's kids half term. Police now. Do they know about this? Yeah. No, no. I'll, uh, I'll ring in tomorrow. Be sure you do. There's not as loose. Yep. Oh. In case you think we treated you badly. I spent the whole of last week with Frank Hilton and Yui Marsden getting rid of a motion to drop you as MP. Go well, comrade. Watson's down with fluids in him. Pan's down and out. He then took a pasting in the Did you say anything about the march? 50,000, did you say? Oh, crap. 80 at least. How was it? Good. Uh huh. I'm down. Crushed all this up. Doesn't matter, you go on down, you get some sleep, you must be white. No, I'm fine. Peculiar or non-natural. Both. 
I'll put him for a new pair. Do you want me to read some of this stuff for you? Uh -uh. It's going. My watch has stopped. It's half twelve. Do you want tea? Ta. Taking the job in London. I said I'm taking the job. What is it? It's a turd. Folk art. Waiting for coffee. It's just a Wednesday, you know. It's just a few fires. We're not rebuilding a fleet. Greetings, countrymen! Correction, country persons. We're all persons now. Man walks into the doctor. He says, Doctor, I feel terrible. The doc examines him and says, You got two weeks to live. The man, reaching involuntarily for his wallet, says, Doc, I can't pay. The doc thinks for a moment and says, Okay, I'll give you another six months. <laughs> Old Polish peasant story. Two peasants. Ladislav and Chaim, walking down the road. Ladislav turns to Chaim, says, Chaim, see the frog? I bet you five groshi. I can swallow him. Okay, says Chaim, you got a deal. Ladislav picks up the frog, takes it, one gulp. <coughs> gone. The money changes hands. They walk on a hundred yards. Chaim turns to Ladislav and says, Ladislav, see the frog? I bet you five groshi I can swallow him. Okay, says Ladislav. Chaim picks up the frog. One gulp. Oh, gone. So Ladislav gives him his money's back. <clears throat> they walk on hundred yards, a mile, two miles. 
Ladislav turns to Chaim and says, Chaim? Chaim? Why did we eat the frogs? Oh, we didn't screw because I couldn't. I couldn't because I didn't want to. I didn't want to because I knew I wouldn't be able to. Why are we here? I wanted to talk. So talk. Who to? What time is it? It's after two. Uh-huh. What are you working on? I'm working up some talks about sex for 14-year-olds. What, in school? Mm-hmm. Terrific. Is that in London or up here? London. Uh-huh. When do you go? End of the month. Maybe sooner. Got to fix up somewhere to stay. Is my place no good, then? think of, wheeling and wheeling round an empty head, is ships in the night, so sobbing pedestrian. I go, you stay, you go, I come back. Sounds like bloody it, Mo. Sounds like what? Doesn't matter. You come back? Epic did you miss? On. Resting on the testicles. I don't think it's possible anymore. Down there. Up here. You heard it Friday night. They can't get rid of you. I could resign the seat. And do what? I don't know. A year ago, I thought this was the place to push. I think I was wrong. If I'm going to do social work, I might as well be a social worker. I just can't find the politics. They're not there. Maybe they never were. So what do you do? 
Go back to the IS? Nope. They're not there either. What are you telling me, Al? Al. How are your children? They're fine. Are they? We came 50 miles to talk, so talk. I think I've moved on. I think you've moved on. Stick with you. I don't know how else to put it. How about goodbye? Is that what you'd like to hear? No, I just want to hear what you've got to say. I haven't got anything to say. You just want out? Yes. No. Yes. The eyes have it, I think. No. I'll make some cocoa. I slept with someone else last week. No, that's not true. I've been sleeping with people since the summer. Oh. And that's not the point either. You make me feel married. I'm not a partner. I'm not a comrade. I'm a surrogate wife. I don't want the dependence bill. In me, I mean. I've started wanting a child. Rather a lot. It doesn't make any sort of sense. I just have the feeling. A child? My child? A child. It's not important. It's just oh. symptomatic. And sleeping? Yeah, in a way. Mm. I don't want to feel spoken for if I fancy another fella. I just want to be free to make my own choices. And who are they? Anyone I know? Christ, you're not listening. I asked you a question. I'm trying to tell well, you Then something. answer the bloody question! It doesn't matter who. It doesn't matter that. It just matters that it makes a difference. You make me feel guilty, and that's bloody childish. I don't want to feel guilty. I just want to feel honest. That's all anyone can ask of anyone else. Honesty. Well, baby, you've got it in spades. Thanks a lot. Why do you stagger on with this anyway? I don't know. Maybe it's something to do with loving you? Horse shit. Oh, shit. You stagger on because you've always staggered on. You need guilt and dependence and deceit and mendacity like some people need heroin. You couldn't quit if you were chained to a puma. You, you couldn't cut free from anything. It's not in your training. You're like a snowball. You pick everything up in your path and take it with you. Well, I'm getting off. While I still care for you. I'll get a train back tomorrow. Okay. Do you want cocoa now? Epididymis. Within this small lump of tissue, which does indeed sit on the testicle, the sperm mature, they become motile, and they wait. For this is the main sperm storehouse. Both fertility and motility of sperm can last for several weeks, but if they are not ejaculated during this lifetime, the sperm eventually degenerate.
No, I want something else. As friends? Yes. Pass, friend. No, I've been out. I had to take someone to the station. Who? Oh, great. So he knows where I am? Look, I don't give a shit for David bloody last. I don't want to see him and I can't imagine why he wants to see me. Well, it's done now. Thanks very much. I don't know. Wednesday. I'm not sure. I'm considering the position. I thought I might resign the seat. Yeah, well, that's tough, Alf, but some things in this life just aren't, aren't they? You too, sunshine. The Prime Minister has cancelled all engagements for the next four days due to what the doctors called a mild virus infection. And now the economic crisis. In the city and in banking circles and at the CBI, the mood is grave rather than panicky. Catastrophe is the word that comes to people's lips more readily now than at any time I can remember, certainly since the war. There's been much talk this week of Chancellor Kersley's latest cap-in-hand visits to the International Monetary Fund in New York. Indeed, one in... Mr. Brand, is it? That's right. Telegram. Oh. Sign there, if you would. It's just to show you've got it. You're uh, on holiday, are you? Yeah. Where are you from? Manchester? Mm-hmm. Lily. How do you like it round here, then? Very nice. I don't live anywhere else myself. Works in Derby for a bit, but I couldn't settle. Lots of money, eh? So I came back. I mean, money's not everything, is it? Absolutely. You know, they talk just like you in Salford. Oh, aye.
Man. <clears throat> Bill. Well, come in. You made it then? Yeah. Phil Renshaw told me you were here. Is this the best they can do? Is it not good? I bet Len Fairclough's is better. What's the show? Have a seat. It's uh, some ITV spectacular. With a uh, Britain? Yeah, from today, I think they call it. It goes out late tonight. I was up here anyway. Standing in for the PM. I thought I might have seen you at the Free Trade Hall meeting Saturday. I was somewhere else. Hmm. Well, you're here now. You have a certain gnomic way with telegrams. Didn't appear to answer the telephone. I had some thinking to do. Did you do it? Some of it. I hear you're in trouble with your local party. Yes. Well, has it that you've alienated the left? It would seem to be so. Well, the terrorism bill. Mm -hmm. Does that surprise you? No, I don't suppose so. I'm angry. They might have told me I was going to have my legs torn off. They chose not to. We call each other comrade. Did you tell them what you were going to do on that committee? No. I felt I was going to have to play it close if I was going to make an impact. And so you expected your comrades to go along with you, whatever you decided? No, not at all. I expected them to raise their objections in a principled way, not try and teach me a lesson with a display of toy democracy. Toy? Pulling strings doesn't suddenly become democratic process because it's the left pulling them. Your agent mentioned that you were talking of giving up the seat. It crossed my mind. All the way across? Not quite. Oh, thank you. On the company, sir. Thank you very much. Cheers. If dialectic teaches us anything, it is that everything we think, do, every moment, every act contains its own contradiction. There's nothing wholly anything. Everything's a movement towards and a movement away from, all at the same time. One step forward, two steps back. We cannot enter the kingdom of socialism with white gloves on a polished floor. And the unascribed locus classic as you cannot make an omelette without breaking some eggs. I'm not against breaking a few eggs. I want to know what happened to the bloody omelette. A quote for all seasons, huh? It's futile to resist a natural eclecticism. <laughs> I still don't get the telegram, but... Thanks for the chat. Wait. Well, Renshaw leaves for the DHSS job Thursday when we reconvene. As yet, I haven't replaced him. So prepared to put you forward, in spite of everything. Wouldn't that be rather foolish? Possibly. Watson wouldn't buy it. Maybe not. Why me? I'll give you the short answer. You're bright, you're tough, you're principled. And fairly soon, I think I'm going to need you. Need me? This is confidential, right? Uh-huh. By the middle of the week, we could find ourselves without a leader. Tuesday, Arthur Watson goes into the London clinic for an operation on his prostate. His doctors have already told him that whatever the result of the operation, he's unlikely to be able to continue. 
which suggests that it's rather grave. Yes? What is it? The director wonders if you'd care to make your way to makeup, sir. Oh, fine. Just coming. If he goes, when he goes, I intend to seek nomination of the ballot for the new leader. And for a while, we can openly hate the same enemies. Jesus Christ! Can you win? Depends. On who stands for the right, on who stands down on the left, and who the centre will stand for. The dealing's already begun. Will you take a hand? Uh, Joker's wild, then, are they? I'm asking you. How long have I got? 24 hours. I shall need to have your answer by tomorrow evening at the latest. All right. You'll have it. Good. I have no time for the long answer, except... There are thousands like you, tens of thousands maybe, just beyond us, just beyond the rim. Full of energy, committed, principled. And this party needs you. And if I can't take you, them, with me, where the hell do I think I'm going anyway? I'll call you. Eight, nine, ten, and twelve. Twelve. Yeah. Just text me all, lads. Yeah. Bye, all. Come on. Come on, Dave. Yeah. No, I won't. I'll, uh, I'll quit oh, while I'm at it. Right, it's MP, it's MP, isn't it? Hi, <laughs> <laughs> right, kid, what are you doing here? I was going to ask you the same question. Best table in East Manchester. It'd have to be. <laughs> what are you having? Good to see you. I'll get him. No, you take a pin. You have to be a member. Right? Uh, no, just a little half. Two halves, Percy, when you have a minute. Uh, I'll put on here. Here, hook him in, will you? Right. Bill? Bill? Come on, Sonny. You an holiday or something? Yeah, sort of. New session starts Thursday. Yeah. Nice. 22p. Keep the change. Oh. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. yeah, I'm on holiday sort of too. Only round here we call it an employment. There's a million and a half of us, I heard it on news. About others, I mean, they'd heard about me. Out of can do? No. Not unless you're handing out jobs. Nah, no, I won't. No, I'm trying to knock it. How's the family coping? All oh, fine. Jane's waiting on down at Dargai Street. He drinks in a bob or two. I look after kids. <laughs> cool. Get a job any day. <laughs> she took night off tonight just to let us get out of the house. <laughs> Look, 
Listen, here's a tenner. Take it. Oh, no, no. Don't be daft, go on. I don't want it. Take it. No, I don't want it. I'll put it away. I saw Mark earlier. Oh, I almost bolt round. <laughs> I haven't seen her for a couple of weeks. She seemed OK. Hmm? Yeah. Did you see a bloke? What? Oh, she's got a bloke. Some fella from Mathel and Platts. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> How are you getting on, then? So-so. Huh? Been in papers again, haven't you? Saw it at Express. <coughs> How long's this lot going on for, Bill? I don't know, Eddie. Well, what are you doing about it? What I can, which isn't much. Well, I mean, somebody had better do something in bloody quick, haven't they? I mean, there's fellas round here been out of work for two years, you know. I mean, they won't be voting Labour next time, I can tell you. Neither will I. Will the Tories be better? I don't know, but they can't be any bloody worse, can they? I mean, I've voted Labour ever since I got the vote, and every time it's the same bloody story. Socialist paradise before, and then freeze and squeeze after. And the unions just sit back and let it happen. They're tough times, eh? Oh, too bloody right they are. I mean, you must think we're puddled, Bill. I mean... I mean, Rolls-Royce, they're still making over 3,000 cars a year. I saw it on news. I mean, who's buying them buggers then? There's somebody minting it, isn't there? Well, it's tough and tough, isn't there? I mean, if that... Kearsley, whatever his name is, that's Chancellor fella. Kersley. Uh, Kersley, yeah. Ah, well, well if, if he thinks he's a friend of the working man, then he'll never need an enemy, but I... God, he won't. I mean, guzzling down there at Lord Mayor's dinner in his white tie and tails. I saw him on box. Well, he wants to come up here and see how we're getting on. Why don't you do something about it? What are you talking about? What the bloody hell can I do? You can bloody well struggle like the rest of us. You can join the Fight for Work campaign. They'll just sit and moan. What are you talking about? Struggle? Well, a fat lot of good that'd do, wouldn't it? I mean, when it comes down to it, we're just a bloody rabble, aren't we? Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Think like that, you'll always be in it up to your neck. Now, listen. We'll do nothing unless we're made. The only power we have is what you give us. It's just words, Bill. Eddie, I've heard it Eddie, it's Eddie, just bloody words. Eddie, Eddie, it is not just words. Well, I'll leave it anyway. I don't want to fall out with you. Here, do you want another? I will let this be off. It's your bollock as else. I'll drop you off. Ah, oh, thanks. I'll just have a peek. Good night, person. Good night. Good night, person. Good night. Good night.